All right, status. Well, I must say that uh, she's ready to come out. So I've already moved the starter as well as the front engine mount. You see, I've already got my transmission jack. I've got it already hooked up um, and raised up. I also have another uh, jack here to hold up the engine. The only thing that's holding it up uh, to the engine is this bell housing bolt here and then that one. Oh, nope, not that one. Uh, where is it? Um, that one over there. And the front or the side side engine mount. Which I'm about to take those bolts out right now. Um, I couldn't get the axle out. Tried many different things. Couldn't get it out. So I think I should be able to lower the transmission with the axle in. At least that's my hope. So um, I'll report back when I get it done. All right, the moment of truth. I've got all the bolts out. Uh, last two bell housing bolts. Um, got both my transmission jack and a regular jack here holding up the transmission and the motor. And <coughs> There was another bolt all the way back down there. So it's a total of four rear engine mount bolts, three on top and one on the bottom. So let's uh, get this trans out. Oh, and also, um, it's, uh, I've got my strap on here too. So, okay, all right. I'll be back. Alrighty, so I have successfully removed our transmission. Here it is right here. Quick note, there's actually right here, there's a, uh, I believe it's a crankshaft sensor. Make sure you take that out before you try to attempt to remove the transmission. <laughs> and here is uh, the engine the um, front flex plate which I'm actually going to be taking that off and putting a new gasket on there. It's not leaking or anything but since I um, took everything out I want to make sure that um, I replace that because this has been one heck of a job. The other thing is that I ran into a problem was when I was lowering the transmission and the engine together I was trying to do it in a way Whereas I wouldn't have to take off the bracket, which obviously I did, but it didn't come. It came with a cost. I was fighting with it for about maybe an hour or two trying to get it out, and what I ended up doing was using one of. I have two of these here. Uh, I didn't record it because I was, you know, I was on the roll with trying to get this transmission out, but I ended up putting it like because the transmission was getting caught right here which is uh, this part so I put a block put my little jack there underneath it and as I was lowering it with the uh, transmission jack it actually shifted in the right direction whereas I was able to uh, slowly lower it out another problem all of these uh, electrical uh, wires here it was a pain trying to move these out of the way and then the other thing I did have to jack the engine back up some as well as use my floor jack to lift up the van which I can I knew I was gonna have to do that um, in order to clear it to slide it out this way so yes it worked so my next project is going to be replacing this torque converter here um, I'm also going to replace the crankshaft sensor I told you about earlier because I broke the uh, part where it bolts into the transmission and then 
the output speed sensor here. Uh, where's it the input? Well, this one right here, because I haven't changed this one. This one I've changed. This one I have not. So yeah, and as you see, the axle that I could not get out, um, I just left it in there. I'm on. I'm actually going to try to remove it though before I put the transmission back in, just to make it easier on me. But I have it supported so that it doesn't put any weight on any of the bearings on the inside. Okay, there we go. Alrighty. So, uh, talk to y'all next time. Okay, so here's my status. I'm already done replacing everything on the transmission. Right here are the torque converters. This is the old one. Uh, this is the new one. I already fitted the new one on the transmission so I know that it fits and that it works. Also, when you're putting, before you take the old one off, make sure that you measure, um, which I'll show you when I, after I uh, place the torque converter on here, make sure that you measure how far in the torque converter is from the bell housing. Uh, mine was one inch all the way around. The other thing is I was having such a hard time with this seal here. Uh, it was hard trying to get it out. I, I used a seal puller, but that just mangled the thing. So I ended up having to use a flathead screwdriver and a hammer to kind of tap it right up here to kind of bend it and then pop it out. I mean, it's up in there really tight. Well, the seals that I bought, which it was a Duralast, it was about six bucks from AutoZone. This one is mangled because I was trying to insert it uh, in the shaft here. But what ended up happening was I tried, I spent like two and a half hours, almost three hours trying to insert this. And I messed up two of these. Uh, the first one I thought it was because I just did not use the tool right. I, I mean my tools because I don't have the special tool to insert this. But then the second one, it was really hard trying to get up in there. And I had a thought, well, maybe let me try to order an OEM part from the dealer, which I did. And that was like $20. Well, this one right here, obviously, it speaks for itself. I got this thing in here in about five minutes with the help, the tapping of my ha regular hammer, house hammer, plus I use one of my long deep sockets just to kind of uh, tap it around all the way in there. I didn't have to use any kind of lubrication or anything to put it in. If you notice the two, you see there is a difference with the rubber part here, whereas this one is out and the OEM one is actually facing in. The other thing is, is this, there's a lip, which you can see right here, whereas on this one, it's almost, this lip here is almost flush with the outer lip. So, the one from AutoZone does not fit, so don't use it. I replaced the, both drive uh, shaft seals. These are OEM parts too. You see, I got a bag on it because I wanted to prevent anything from getting in and also from fluid leaking out while the transmission was sitting. Right here is where the dipstick goes. I replaced the um, input speed, uh, speed sensor here. And this is the new Dorman pan that I replaced, which has the drain bolt here. Also, what I did was to get that other axle out that was stuck in here. Got an idea from somebody on YouTube where I inserted a long screwdriver through here. I can't really show you right now. Let me see. Oh, maybe you can see through the plastic. You see that rod that's going through the middle? Well, I stuck my screwdriver all the way through there. It's really skinny. And I tapped it out. And it came right out in about five minutes. Again, I spent about two, three hours trying to get this thing out of here. Okay, um, another thing I just want to show you is, is that this is a good idea of how to keep up with your parts. If you notice, I use sandwich bags, just regular Ziploc sandwich bags. I labeled everything. 
so that way I can I knew exactly where everything was also on some of the bolts I numbered them like for the bell housing bolts I numbered each one and I use a diagram here so that way I know which one uh, goes I also did replace the rear engine seal that was easy it took about 30 minutes to do that um, make sure that you clean uh, these uh, transmission uh, guide pins here and over here as well as the ones on the transmission which is here and right here I also cleaned the transmission lines I checked them but they were they're in pretty good shape um, if you want to actually take them unhook them from the cooler if you have a cooler you take out this light here and there is you have access to it right there and also I forgot to show you the crank bolt for for you to crank to the engine so that you can get to the torque converter bolts is right here 15 millimeter sock, uh, socket with a long extension crank the engine over and that's how you take the bolts out uh, replace the tie rods both on both sides out of tie rods because I stripped one so I figured I might as well change both of them and I think that's about it so right now I'm about to reinsert the transmission actually I'm gonna put the torque converter on first and then reinsert the transmission I'll show you a picture of that um, when I'm done all right torque converters in so now I'm about to insert it into the um, to tighten it up to the motor so I'll be back forgot to tell you that make sure that while you're inserting the torque converter that you I'm um, in order to make sure it's seated all the way you're going to hear two clunks and um, while you're turning it so you just keep turning clockwise rotating it kind of uh, you know shaking it you're going to have to use both hands though to do it and it goes right in it's real easy it doesn't screw in or anything but that's just how the torque converter goes in and as you can see from the top uh, you can see how far in the torque converter is. and that's how you can tell that it's all the way in outside of taking a measurement before you take the whole one out and then another way is to see if you can reach behind it which you know I really can't uh, do that can't reach behind it okay alright so um, use blue Loctite on these bolts here highly recommend using anti-seize for all of the other bolts to make sure you don't have to use a lot but just to make sure they don't seize up if you ever have to take anything apart again I'm going to wait to put the uh, crankshaft sensor in here until after I attach the transmission back to the motor and the reason why this is because of that lip right there there's a lip here I'm sorry see there's a lip that rotates around on the inside here so to make sure I don't damage it because it sticks out right here I'm gonna put it in after I insert it alright okay be back <laughs> 